Hello guys, welcome to my channel where we make videos that cover all you need to know about medical doctors and medical students. In today's video, we're going to talk about seven healthy lifestyle that could actually be harmful to those that observe them. The aim of this video is to shed more light on some of these lifestyles and how they've caused more harm than good, especially when not being observed properly. I hope this educates a lot of people to know how to do these things right. Uh, in actual sense, there are some of these that you don't need to even do at all. You're fine without them. If you're new to this channel, please subscribe and turn on your bell notifications so you don't miss my new videos, which I drop twice weekly. And to my returning subscribers, thank you for returning once again. So now let's dive into today's video. Thieves! Hi, God. The first is over drinking water. In as much as medical practitioners encourage people to take a lot of water, which is very beneficial, the importance cannot even be overemphasized. However, some people become very overzealous and take too much water. Yes, you can take too much water. There is a rate at which your kidneys usually excrete this water because know that the kidney plays a role of excreting excess water and excess electrolytes and other waste products out of your body via urine. So you could take too much water that overworks the kidney and exceed the limit to which your kidney can excrete them and this causes you to have too much water in your body that could harm you in the long run. Part of the effects could be swelling of brain cells, which could cause the person affected to have drowsiness, confusion, and frequent headaches. It could also cause heart conditions like hypertension and bradycardia, which is reduced heart rates. And this is also harmful to the individual concerned. Another effect is hyponatremia, which is low sodium in the body. When this excess water stays in the body, it dilutes a lot of electrolytes and one of the common electrolytes affected is sodium. Sodium is very important in the body for a lot of functions and this hyponatremia could be life-threatening if not corrected on time. So yes, you could actually take way more water than your body can handle. We know that some require way more water like athletes and those that live in hot environments but don't be overzealous you could take way way more water than your body actually needs the next is detoxifiers and detoxifiers are being sold to a lot of people now which are said to help the body get rid of toxins that we pick from the environment. They are responsible for almost everything people experience from bloating to insomnia to low mood to frequent headaches and the rest. People fail to understand that the body is naturally blessed with two organs majorly that help detoxify the body from toxins. And these are the liver and the kidney. Many of these detoxifiers actually harm these organs, especially the liver. So you take something with the aim of detoxifying your body, which in turn detoxifies the organ that detoxifies your body. In the long run, you end up being in a very terrible state. So, so far as you're healthy, so far as you're maintaining a healthy lifestyle, you don't need these detoxifiers. There are few people that will need it, especially people that are coming out from alcohol addiction. Research has shown that many of these things are very harmful to the human body. So please, you don't need this detoxifier. So far as you're healthy and you're maintaining a healthy lifestyle, taking these things could even cause more harm than good to you. The next is closely related to the last one is supplements. Now supplements are sold to people they usually contain nutrients, some vital minerals, some particular chemicals that are said to be very beneficial to you and they are sold as tablets, as capsules, as powders, as drinks too. But then know that 
many of the very very important nutrients you need nutrients and chemicals that you need are found in food so far as you are eating healthily you don't need this supplement there are a few people that will need supplements maybe they don't have access to nutritious food and others that have very low concentration of these nutrients or minerals their needs is beyond that which food could be able to provide at this moment so they will need supplements to be able to meet up to that but then if you're healthy and you are eating healthy you don't need these supplements one of the dangers of supplements is that you could actually ingest too much which in turn harms you many of these things that have been sold after studies have been done on them have been found to have no significant advantage on the people that are taking them per se so you end up spending a lot of money for something you don't really need or something that could easily harm you too please don't be in a hurry to be buying supplements except when it's being recommended by your doctor you don't just go on your own and start taking supplements they could cause more harm than good to you the next is something that i am guilty of too and is skipping breakfast so a lot of people skip breakfast for various reasons but the american heart association released a statement saying that people who constantly skip breakfast are at risk of heart diseases obesity and diabetes in fact a 16 year old harvard study done involving about 27,000 men observed that those who skip breakfast regularly had an increased risk as about 27 percent more increased risk of dying from heart attacks or coronary heart diseases please stop skipping breakfast i hope my wife will hear this year i know she'll hear it when i have repented i'll be taking breakfast the next one is sleep so yes it's been found that more and more people sleep less and this has been linked to a lot of health conditions which range from heart diseases, mental illnesses, obesity, and a lot of other things. It's been recommended that most adults uh, need just about seven to nine hours of sleep. There are some people that actually cope well with less hours of sleep. There are a few of them. And then there are some that need more sleep, especially younger children and pregnant women. However, oversleeping too could be harmful. It poses the person similar risk to of diabetes, of hypertension, heart diseases, obesity, and other things too. So don't oversleep and don't undersleep. Seven to nine hours of sleep is okay for you. People that are chronically exposed to lesser sleep time or more sleep time could actually be in trouble. And try to take naps during the day. It's been proven to be very, very good for you. The next is something that I hope those that are involved don't catch me because I know I might be in trouble with them and that's going to the gym. Many people go to the gym, register in the gym to try to get the right body shape and keep healthy, which is good. But then studies have found that for most people, and I mean most people, going to the gym could be way more harmful to them than not going at all. And they have been documented dangers of going to the gym from dietary imbalance bodily injuries low self-esteem damage to the heart and also a waste of money because many people register and overpay for sessions that they wouldn't really come so you could do some exercise too that you don't need to go to the gym and it's already established that what you eat has more impact on your body than the activities you engage in so try to eat healthy, cut down on junks and other things, and then you wouldn't need to strenuously go to the gym to be able to keep fit. The last habit or lifestyle is something that has directly affected us as health workers, especially medical doctors. It's people diagnosing themselves and also treating themselves with Google. The internet has made a lot of materials to be easily accessible to people but then people have, in this course, been able to diagnose themselves with Google and some of them even come to the hospital with that diagnosis in mind 
and also the recommended test for them and will clash with health workers if they think otherwise. As a nurse rightly put it, Google has a vast quantity of information but lack discernment. And this discernment, this skill to be able to know what is wrong with you amidst a lot of signs and symptoms is something that is reserved exclusively to health workers. So allow us to do our jobs, we're trained for that and we know that we'll keep you safe. It's our duty to ensure you're safe. Stop googling your symptoms. Please stop using Dr. Google to diagnose yourself and treat yourself. Stop that. You could research, yes, you could read on a lot of disease conditions, but when you need to come to the hospital, come to the hospital and listen to where trained professionals would help you. That's all for today's video. What do you think about the video? What did you agree with? What didn't you agree with? What reservations do you have? What do you think I left out? And please let me know in the comment section below. I hope this really helps you. If you're yet to subscribe to this channel, please subscribe and turn on the bell notification so you don't miss my new videos. Thank you very much and see you in my next video. Thank you.